Welcome back to Janky AF. Uh, we're going to look at how to get vintage license plates. And uh, vintage license plates are not to be confused with historical license plates. Vintage license plates are period accurate plates. So the plates that were actually being manufactured when the vehicle you have, your classic car, was on the road as opposed to historical plates which actually have a historical banner on them and are new plates. Now the cool thing about historical plates is you can get vanity plates, customized historical plates, um, but you can actually get vanity uh, period accurate plates if you look hard enough. So I live in New York State and these are the plates that I got for my 1995 Buick LeSabre. Zugawawa. I love it. So, I've gotten pulled over in my Aerostar, with my 1986 Aerostar that says hot and spicy. Uh, I used to have a different uh, vintage plate on it, but I've gotten pulled over no less than four times. And every time I get pulled over, the kind officer says to me, I thought you hadn't registered your car since, you know, 1986, or I, in this case, these were made until the year 2000. And I kindly explain now with all this experience behind me that, no, I got pulled over in a price shopper one time by a park ranger because of my plates. Um, and that was weird getting pulled over in a parking lot when you already stopped, but anyways. So, uh, so a lot of people don't know about vintage plates, that you can actually put period accurate plates on your car. And it's a really cool thing, and I love it, in particular these Lady Liberty New York plates, the red, white, and blue scheme. It's a very iconic 90s thing. Um, and these actually ran from 86 till 2000, but you can look up when your car was made, obviously, and then you can look up when the plates were accurate for that period of time very easily and then you can buy a set of plates on eBay. Now in New York State you're gonna have to get two. You're gonna have to get a matching pair which can be tricky sometimes and limits your options. Other states I think you may only need one. Or Florida and Vermont don't check me on that or check me on that but so anywho we have this beautiful uh, my 1995 Buick LeSabre which has uh, just gotten um, a bunch of work done to it. I'm very happy about that. We'll see another video about that but you are interested in the vintage plates. That's what we're gonna talk about. So we want to get these plates on here. First step, uh, you have to re you have to get your car registered and insured as historic. So first step of driving any car, get the car insured. Even before you even own it sometimes, you got to get it insured so you can drive back, whatever you're going to do. Now, when you register the vehicle, um, for vintage plates, the registration has to be historic and it has to say on the registration historic. So let's go to the website now and look at that. And that, in most cases, is a very easy thing to do. So we're going to about New York DMV website. Uh, historical plates are new plates issued by the DMV to a vehicle that was manufactured more than 25 years before the current calendar year. So New York State, I think nationally, 25 years, same with import rules, 25 years is uh, when something is considered a, a, a classic. So, standard historical plates begin with the letters HX, cars and trucks, HM for motorcycles. However, both types of plates can be personalized for additional fee. This is the other thing. The other advantage of vintage plates, they're much cheaper. The fee, as you'll see, to file for vintage plates is $3.75. And, um, as, as we all know, historical cars are cheaper to insure. Um, now, granted, they can't be your only means of transportation, but also your registration for your vintage plates is going to be much cheaper than your historical plates. So it's a bargain, and in my opinion, it's, it's, it's much cooler because the car is more, you know, that Pebble Beach ethos of everything completely original. Like, well, you actually have the original plates from the original year that that car was being manufactured. What are vintage plates and what vehicles are eligible? Vintage plates are the actual plates issued to the vehicle owner or other original plates, not reproduction. So it doesn't have to be the exact plates your car were registered with. It just has to be plates that are real, that were made during that time period. So in, otherwise, in, other, in other words, the Lady Liberty plates were made from 86 to 2000. I don't need an actual 95 plate. I mean, in some states they may have measured that with little tags on them. In New York State used to do that, but any plate from this era that matches your car's year will work. 
Any motor vehicle manufactured more than 25 years before the current calendar year that is used only as a collector's item or exhibition piece and not for daily transportation may be registered with vintage plates from the model year of the vehicle. Vintage plates are optional and their registrations are valid for one year. Learn about pricing and how to apply for vintage plates. So we're going to click on that. Okay, now, where can I purchase vintage plates? I got them on eBay. Apply for vintage plates. How to apply? To register your vehicle with vintage plates, you must have an actual plates that were valid in New York State in the year the vehicle was manufactured. If it was a metal tab year, this is a New York State thing. I think I believe back in the day the plates would switch from blue to yellow every year, so you could see just kind of like your registration sticker on your window. Now they could easily tell if your car was not up to date. Unless it was two years, and then yeah. Uh, otherwise, any plates issued in the year the vehicle is manufactured may be used on any type of vehicle. I believe we can click on learn more that you can even put commercial farm uh you know any of these sort of little tags that go below the plate to to specify something i believe all those can be used as well but i would need to check on that so requirements okay here we go here's the list you must apply for vintage place by mail and you're required to submit the following documents now with dmvs and corona and all that you gotta do it by mail anyways. But I'm telling you, this is the best deal around. Completed vintage license plates form. MV4, MV-440V. Okay, that's this. I printed them all out. I'm about to send this in the mail. Vintage license plates. It's two pages. It's very simple. Okay, there's this, and there's this. All you're really doing Look at this. If you have a valid New York State registration with historical plates, the fee is $3.75 for the new document. Owner's certificate. I certify the vehicle I want to register with vintage plates. is owned and operated as an exhibition piece or collector's item. Anything that, to get historical classic car insurance, this is the same deal. You can't be your everyday driver. You can't use it all the time. doesn't mean you can't. I mean, Haggerty, I always talk about how great Haggerty is. There's not a necessarily a mileage limit, but it just can't be your only means of transportation, basically, okay? $3.75. Can you believe that? $3.75 for a whole year, which is just like ridiculous and these plates i think i played paid thirty dollars for these plates so in terms of adding something cool um and unique to your vehicle this is one of the cheapest coolest and most sort of like um and the fact that it's the state allows you to do this i think is very cool so there you go so that's number one okay that's mv four four zero v Okay, completed application for registration title. Now, I'll be honest, this is the one that trips me up the most because if your car is already registered, when you go out to fill out this registration, it's like, well, what am I doing? Am I registering? It's already registered. But I think I'm going to write, and I've done this before, but I can't remember. I think I'm going to write change registration, okay? This is MV82. You've probably filled one of these out before. And then when you write the, you know, your driver's license, where do you get mail, vehicle identification number, odometer, and most of this stuff doesn't matter because I think like, you know, your odometer stops being relevant after a while. Now you might have to put your, your plate number on here. I can't remember. But anyways, so you fill out this form best you can. You know, this is, you fill out, is this going to be used for what and blah, blah, blah. Insurance requirements not for hire. It's not a taxi. It's you know personal vehicle or if your LLC owns it or whatever. It's a it's exhibition vehicle. So there you go. Um, now this says make sure you're. I don't know if you actually have to pay anything here because if your vehicle's already registered, you're just changing the registration. So I'm you know do that as it applies to you. But I think all you're doing is paying the three dollar and seventy five cent fee. Color photograph of the vintage plates, all right? So you take your plates, you take a picture of them, you email it to yourself or get it on your computer, and uh, there, all right? You got my photograph. Make sure you got both plates if you need two plates. They need to be in respectable condition. Um, there's that, photocopy of your driver's license. I need to show you my driver's license, but we got a photocopy of my driver's license. There's yours truly with my lovely long locks. All right. Now, proof of ownership. 
this is essentially just uh, uh, insurance ID card. So when you fill, when you get your car insurance, they give you the little proof of ownership thing. If you don't have it on you, you can contact your insurance company. Um, get that. But here's the big thing. Here's the tricky part. Um, you have to make sure this car is uh, registered historic. And sometimes that can be a little tricky. If you have classic car insurance, I had classic car insurance through Haggerty. I made sure I got this Buick. This is a 95. So in 2020, it just turned 25 years old. So this is just appropriate now to make a classic, even though it's been a classic for a long time. Here's my insurance. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> I'll try to cover this up. Um, my VIN, um, this has to say historical right here. Okay. This is the most important thing. It's got to say historical right here. And I got, I went through, you know, I contacted my insurance broker. I got hooked up with Haggerty. I got my car on my Haggerty policy with my 86 Ford Aerostar. Great. Everything's great. Now I went to get my insurance ID cards and bum, bum, bum. There it is. The whole policy. It doesn't say historical on that. That's the linchpin. But I went on Haggerty's website and actually you can do one of these things where you, I know I sound like an 89 year old man, but you can actually chat with them right through the thing. You don't have to call them. Um, so I had a beautiful like four minute text conversation with this person and they said, no problem. They, they say, we'll put historical on it. They, and then they emailed me over the new policy change or whatever. And it came in the mail a couple days later, but I could at least print this off it says historical on it now. Okay. So it's got to say historical on your on your uh, registration. That's the big one. Okay, cards without the word historical will not be accepted. Contact your insurance company to get information about insurance for an historical vehicle. I know a lot of a lot of policies, the major ones, Progressive and Geico and whatever, all those um, will do historical policies. But I do recommend using a company such as Haggerty. I know I sound like a shill for them, but they've just been the best in terms of getting, you know, customer service and their policies are really great. Like they have a driver's club, comes with glass coverage, 24 seven roadside assistance. I'm telling you, it's just a mate. It's a really good idea to get classic car insurance. Um, you'll have to tell them, you know, you have to, you have to show that you own a other vehicle. You have to provide proof that you, you know, have a good place to store the vehicle. You guys set the valuation of the car together so the car is worth that agreed upon amount under your policy next proof of insurance send a valid insurance id card uh issued and dated within 180 days um that would be um again i guess this you know Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I went on to the wrong one. Proof of ownership. Your vehicle is currently registered with you. Provide a photocopy of the current registration. Okay, here's my registration, right? It's got my uh, address and all that. It's my registration for, the, for my vehicle. So that's your proof of ownership. I skipped a step. My apologies. The proof of insurance is the one where you need to have the historical on there. Sales tax receipt. The vehicle has never been registered in your name in New York State. When I registered the car for the first time, I bought it in New Jersey. I paid the sales tax at that time. That's reflected on my registration. Um, I find this is a lot easier to buy the car, get it insured, get it registered, and then switch it over to classic. But if you're doing all that from the first time, um, you can try to do that. I find it's easier just to get everything going, make sure it's, you got it plated and registered and all that, and then switch it over to historic also because it's a 95 is the first time I could do it. Um, sales tax receipt if the vehicle is never registered. So, payment by check, money order, credit card. So I'm going to write a check to the New York State DMV Custom Plates Unit for $3.70, $3.75, whatever it is, and um, $3.75. And uh, then in a couple of weeks, I should get um, my new registration that will be updated on, on here instead of, uh, you know, my... Uh, plate number will change to um, Zugawawa, which is amazing. I'll slap the plates on and I'm good to go. I'm fully registered. I'm fully uh, insured. And then I can have, uh, you know, enjoying conversation and enjoying conversations with law enforcement officers where I explain to them that my 20 year old license plates are actually completely up to date and reasonable.
um, and have a good chuckle about it. So, sorry that was a bit long-winded, but I get very excited about my vehicles. Um, so I wanted to say how this applies to me. Now, if you're not in New York State, it should be slightly different, but a lot of people don't even know that you can put period accurate plates on your car and it's in, in a lot of cases actually cheaper and I think it looks really cool. It's just cheaper than like, you know, getting custom vanity plates. So uh, I just wanted to give you a quick step-by-step -step tutorial um, in a janky fashion, of course, um, how to do that. So uh, best of luck to you and um, uh, janky do thank you.